Enantiomers are sugars that are mirror images of each other. D-glucose is an enantiomer of L-glucose. I'll spell that for you. E-N-A-N-T-I-O-M-E-R. Enantiomer. Okay. Everybody with me so far? Now, let's move for forward again. And yes. Okay. Why didn't the double bond oxygen move over? Because that's not a stereo, that's not a, that, that's not an asymmetric carbon. There's only three things attached, right? There have to be four things attached, right? Okay. Good question, though. Did you, everybody hear what she asked? Why doesn't the double bond oxygen flip? Because the carbon is not asymmetric. Okay. It doesn't matter which way you write the double bonded oxygen because the, that, that carbon uh, only has three things attached to it. Okay. Um, Let's take a look at some four carbon sugars. And no, you're not going to memorize the names of these. There are some sugars that I think you should memorize names and structures for, and I'll tell you what they are. I'll tell you what they are right now if you'd like to know. Glucose. The most abundant sugar on the face of the earth, you need to know the structure and name of glucose. Fructose. Probably the second most abundant sugar on the face of the earth. You need to know the name and structure of fructose. Sucrose. It's a disaccharide made of putting glucose and fructose together. I'll show you that one later. Okay. And I think for our purposes, those three will suffice. Right? Okay. Now, Let's look at some other sugars because I'm going to use other sugars to illustrate a couple of other, or at least one other name for you. Here are, so what, what, would, you, what would you categorize this, mole, this molecule right here as? Give me the names that you would give it, besides the fact that it's 3 O's. How would you describe it? How many carbons does it have? So it's going to be called A. Okay, and what else about it chemically? It's an aldo. So it's an aldo tetros, for example, right? Okay. It's an aldo tetros. So is this one. This guy's an aldo tetros also. Are these two mirror images of each other? No. Okay. Uh, but they're both, they both have four carbons. They both are aldo tetroses, right? When we have two uh, sugars that have the same number of carbons and the same chemistry, that is, they're both aldoses, okay? And they're not mirror images. We give them a name. They're called diastereomers. That's what this word is right here. Diastereomers. So they have the same number of carbons. They have the same chemical form, in this case, um, aldose. But they're not mirror images. So these guys are diastereomers. All right. If I were to ask what the enantiomer of erythrose is, I would say, well, I've got a flip, i got a flip, and I've got L-erythrose. If I wanted to have the um, um, sorry, flip, 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 there, right. Um, if I wanted to have the enantiomer of D3-ose, I would flip uh, accordingly like that. Okay. So we can see, therefore, that, yeah? Sorry, so it's the carbon, it's the second carbon that is for a D or L. Okay, so the D or L determines if it's D or, I mean, the, the second carbon right there from the bottom determines if it's a D or L sugar, yes? Okay. Yeah, yeah, makes sense? Mm -hmm. Always look at the next one to the bottom. Okay, I was thinking second from the top. Right. Then the rest of the sugar is defined by its name. And we're not going to memorize the names, but, but you can see this is an erythrose, okay, in the D or the L configuration. Yes, sir. Well, you, the aldehyde is always going to be at one end, right? Right. Make sense? Yes, Iris. Everything I've said, yeah.
Well, I've, I've talked about it, so I think that's fair. Yeah, Aldo Tetros or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Is that a question or is that just scratching your back? Okay. All right. So there are, there's a bunch of nomenclature right there for you. Um, here's the D aldoses, just to give you an idea about them. This is looking at the D aldoses, just the Ds. All right. There's one D form of a triose. There's two total, two total trioses, right? D and L of, of this guy. There's two D uh, tetroses. There are four D forms of pentoses. And there are six D forms, I'm sorry, there are eight D forms of the um, hexoses. Every time we add another asymmetric carbon, we add two more possibilities. We double it. One to two to four to eight. And remember that we also have L forms of all these as well. So the total number we have is two, four, eight, 16. Now there's one other sugar on here whose structure you should know. I haven't talked about it yet, but it's a very important sugar because it's present in nucleic acids and that's ribose. Ribose is the easiest of all of them to memorize. Ribose is a pentose, meaning it has five carbons. It's an aldose, so it's an aldopentose. And look, all of the hydroxides are on the right side. Very simple. The easiest one for you to memorize. What's that? I'll be talking about ring structures. And yes, the ring structures are the ones I've talked about will also be fair game. Okay. Now, as you probably recall from your organic chemistry, sugars don't uh, typically exist in straight chain forms. They tend to cyclize. And that's because in three-dimensional space, these carbons aren't as far apart as they would look like they are uh, as we draw it out in straight chain. When they do that, they form a ring. And you will be responsible for knowing the ring structures of glucose, fructose, sucrose, and ribose, as well as the straight chain. So both the ring and the straight chain of those four. Now, how do you keep them straight? There's a variety of ways of keeping them straight. Okay? When I first memorized the structure of glucose, I memorized the structure of, of alpha D-glucose, which is this guy right here. And to this day, I remember it as down, down, up, down, up. If I look at where the hydroxides are, they're down, down, up, down, up. Down, down, up, down, up. Okay. If I know that it's a right, left, right, right, all I have to do is keep track of my carbons and I can figure if right corresponds to down or up. I don't have to memorize that. Okay. See carbon number two, carbon number two is to the right, carbon number two is down, so right must mean down. The exception is this guy back here. A D sugar will always have the last carbon pointing up. Now, what's this guy here? We've got an OH on carbon number one. And by the way, whenever you draw a, stru a sugar structure in a ring, I always, always, always underline this, recommend that you number your carbons. It'll keep you from getting confused. It's very simple for glucose. It's more complicated for fructose. Number your carbons. You'll always know where you are. Here's carbon number one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. Here's carbon number one. It's got an OH on there. That doesn't have an OH on there. The cyclization reaction actually brought a hydrogen from right here to create that OH. Now we've got a new carbon that has four things attached to it. This guy didn't have four things attached. It only had three things attached. We've got a new asymmetric carbon that's there. That new asymmetric carbon has a name. It's an anomeric carbon, A-N-O-M-E-R-I-C. The anomeric carbon can have two possible configurations. If the OH is down, 
it's in the alpha configuration. If it's up, it's in the beta configuration. Okay. When we talk about rings, there's another name that comes up. I know you guys love this nomenclature. Hopefully you've gone through it before. When we talk about rings, there's another nomenclature that comes up. It's pyrin. This is actually a molecule. It's an organic chemical that's out there. And we look at the structure of pyrin right here. It looks not unlike the structure of this ring over here. Six members, has an oxygen in it. Okay. This has double bonds, that doesn't. But basically, same general structure. A pyrin refers to a six-member ring. Therefore, we call this a pyrinose, P-Y-R-A-N-O-S-E. Glucose in the six-membered ring configuration is called a pyrinose. It's possible for glucose to be in a five-membered ring. We're not going to make it more complicated for you. Okay. Now, I want to point out to you that the six-membered ring of glucose contains one oxygen. That's why this carbon's up over here. The sixth carbon is not a part of the ring. The six members include carbon number one, two, three, four, five, plus oxygen. That oxygen is that oxygen right there. Okay, so... Reviewing, we have a pyranose because it has six members. We have an anomeric carbon that's been created by the cyclization of the ring. The anomeric carbon can exist in the alpha configuration, which is down, or in the beta configuration, which is up. Okay. One last set of terms, and then we're going to go on to the next slide. Last set of terms is in the ring structure. I refer to these as Hayworth structures, H-A-W-O-R-T-H. Name for the person who drew them, Hayworth. The straight chains are called Fisher projections, F-I-S-C-H-E-R. Fisher, Fisher versus Hayworth. You guys want to use a stretch. How about a stretch? We haven't stretched in a while. Why don't we take a stretch? Or jumping jacks. Or a jog. Anything I talk about is fair game. Well, I think you should know how to. I think if you have to know the structures of those, then you're already knowing the conversion, right? Okay, a lot of nomenclature. A lot of nomenclature. There's um, glucose. This is another way of writing the ring structure. And your book, I think, actually calls this a fissure. I don't like calling this a fissure. I like calling this a fissure. Okay. Um, interestingly, glucose can exist in both the alpha and the beta forms. Okay. And it flips between them. So in solution, glucose will go from being a straight chain to flipping over into the alpha. And after a while, it'll flip from alpha back into the straight chain. It can go back to alpha or it can go to beta. So the point is it can flip back and forth between these different forms. That is possible only if there's nothing attached to this OH. If we attach something to this OH, we lock it in the ring form.